thank you for having me, Shoko as well. Um, welcome all of you. Um, yes, I am Piet Was. I am the founder and current publisher of Gop Magazine, um, which is a uh, renowned photography magazine, international photography magazine about inspirational photography. So we talk about art photography in a way that's accessible and affordable as well. It's a print publication four times a year. Um, um, yeah, and this talk is about um, where we come from, um, where we are at, and where we'd like to go. And it more specifically goes is, is about how to publish a magazine. Um, very general, because 15 minutes is not too much to explain all of that. So I'll go through it quickly. Well, not too quickly, but I'll leave space for questions if there are any after the uh, presentation. Um, well, first, in general, we started this magazine like 11 years. How many people of you actually know the magazine? Okay, that's not too bad. Um, it's very funny because um, people don't, most of our readers don't realize that we're from Amsterdam and the biggest um, readership we have is actually in Amsterdam or in the Netherlands. Um, this is exactly how we wanted it to be um, when we started it. We wanted an international podium. Um, but this also means that not everybody knows us, since, but we're also um, very well in, all, um, in most of the shops in Kiosk. Um, it's here, I brought a couple of magazines. I was thinking about bringing one for everyone, but then I heard how many people were coming in. Uh, <laughs> I'll bring it on my bike. So um, you can find over those magazines. I don't want to sell them tonight. It's for um, you to um, get an impression, a general impression of what we do. Um, we don't talk about technical stuff, we don't talk about gear, cameras, etc. We only discuss photography um, that we think is good and great and upcoming and um, ambitious. Um, we do that in a manner that is accessible to a bigger audience, so we'd like to um, get, take you by the hand and guide you through the uh, landscape called, uh, which is art photography. Um, guide to Unique Photography is, is known for, for God, God Magazine, Guide to Unique Photography. Um, I do not see which slide is next. Um, as I said, Guide to Unique Photography, uh, since 2005, uh, that's 11 years now. Um, we established, uh, we, we were aware of a need in the market 11 years ago. We actually, me and my partner in crime back then, Jochem, and I, I, I used to study with the guy. Um, we both were picture editors, freelance, working for magazines, etc. And we actually were really interested in art photography, but we couldn't really, I mean, we were not uh, educated in art photography. So we went to shops and we wanted to buy um, inspiration in like magazines and everything, but the stuff we could buy was like, yeah, it was like 25 euro magazines, it was like pretty uh, intellectual stuff, museum-like stuff. And, not stuff that you, um, not light stuff that you like to take in if you like to learn <coughs> more about art photography. So we, we, we saw there was a need and we also realized that 11 years ago, the techno technology, technology developments were going so quick that in a couple of years, everybody could afford like proper um, good equipment to photograph and, like, like professional photograph photographers did back in the days. So we saw a need and we saw an opportunity, so we created a magazine that we would like to buy and with stuff that we would like to see uh, on an attractive and accessible level for us that's, uh, and well, to get inspired mostly and, and go out there and maybe make it ourselves or go and explore and visit, visit a museum, visit an exhibition, exhibition buy a book, uh, go see online what, what's, what's happening with the photographer we featured, what, what kind of work he does more, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, um, we drew up a sketch and we met this guy who had an art gallery and he said, well, that's cool because I'd like to do a magazine. I, I don't know where to advertise my art gallery. Um, and we were like, okay, but we, don't, we know how to make a magazine, but we, we don't have the funds. And we were like, but we think you do. <laughs> so, if you like to do the magazine with us, you've got to pay for it while we do all the work for nothing. So he said, okay, let's go. And like a month later, we made this first issue. It was launched uh, by Aaron Olaf in the Olympic Stadium, so it was pretty big at the time. And uh, we did it six times a year. Well, it's actually the next slide. It was 2005. We made 2,000 copies, 100 pages each, uh, six times a year, A5 sized, a little bit smaller than it's now. We did 10 cities, two countries, Netherlands and Belgium. Um, we had like, we sold 25%. But we didn't have a website, we didn't have a web show, we didn't have social media. Um, 
It's interesting because we finished the magazine, we ordered 2,000 copies with the printer, we got 2,000 copies, and then we're like, okay, how do we, how do we get this stuff in the store? How do we get this, how do we get this sold? So actually for the first two and a half years, we tried to go with the bigger distribution guys, but they're like, yeah, come on, we need to make some money. Well, we were five euros back in the days. Um, so that wasn't going to happen. So I owned this big Volvo. So who was driving around the town, <laughs> around the Netherlands for like three days, every two months, me trying to sell, <laughs> trying to, to bookshops and museums, trying to sell magazines. <laughs> and sometimes I went there and they said, yeah, yeah, this is nice. I like too. And I was like, yeah, man, they went two bucks. And then, yeah. and then it got yeah. to be two yeah. magazines. Uh -huh. So I'm, then 2000 minus two magazines is still a whole lot of magazines. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, well, after two and a half, three years, it started uh, catching up, and one of our beta players, which is like this big distribution company, distributing to most of the kiosks and bookstores, book they wanted us in, they wanted to try us, which worked. Um, so, uh, in 11 years, we developed and we grow, grew and we added stuff. And this is our latest issue, 50 issues later, um, it's our anniversary issue. Um, we're here, and we're those stats. We're out in it's not, yeah it's twenty thousand copies more or less one hundred eighty pages. This one actually has thirty two more. Uh, four times a year, bigger size, more pages, uh, more countries, like thirty, I think even more nowadays. Uh, more souls. Uh, we have a proper website. Uh, we have a successful webshop, and we do social media. Uh, we used to do events a lot as well, but. Um, that's a bit difficult <coughs> in 33 countries and you want to be, um, you want to treat your, your readership evenly. Um, so this is where we are. Um, this is what I just told you. It used to be goodwill, partners, hard work, no weekends off, nights working, because we do a lot with, you know, we deal a lot with people from the other side of the ocean. So that meant we work at night and we had a day, day job. So everything like, everything, after work was good. Um, <laughs> nowadays we have subscribers, we have retail sales, we have partners, we have web show, we have additional products, etc. Um, yeah, I'm going to. Oh, sorry, I'm going to skip to some covers, and if you have one story, I'll tell you. And otherwise, just a little pause for my story for you to see <laughs> what we did. I mean, there's so much to show. I just decided to show you the cover. Yeah, this uh, was something. <laughs> uh, well, this is really nice. This is one of my favorite covers, but we never realized that nudity on the cover in the, in the store when you're an international magazine could be a problem. Yeah. So um, we got this letter from the American um, distributor saying that, look, you said you have nudity, we moved you over to the porn section. <laughs> <laughs> we packed all your magazines with those block, with these black things, you know, to block it off, and um, we'll send you the bit. <laughs> So that was a hard lesson to learn, no more news. Um, yeah, why, why, who, when, and where? Now it's going to be a bit technical, we see some more covers. This is actually a great story. This is a photo by Alex Schott, a really, really well-known big American photographer. And, um, well, we didn't know nothing at the time. We just knew that we wanted this photo on the cover. And how do you do that? Because if you call an agency, they're going to charge a fee. If you call the manage his manager, they're going to charge a fee. It's all difficult, and we don't have, we didn't have money. So we tried to, f we figured out his phone number in the States. <laughs> and we just went, uh, in the middle of the night, we found him. And he picked up, picked up the phone, and he was like, okay, I know you guys, I heard about you, but uh, what do you want? Because I, I don't have much time. So he said, well, we'd like this photo on the cover. And he said, well, that's not a problem. I'm next to my uh, to my wife in the hospital. She's giving birth to her first son. <laughs> so, so you can do whatever you'd like to do. I'm happy with everything. <laughs> so we got to publish this as a cover. This is my This is why from the Elska, you probably don't know her. I don't know her. <laughs> No, this wasn't uh, a very good cover. This didn't sell a lot. It was like a mistake. Like, okay, why did we have to do this? <laughs> An old guy in his underwear being new. Uh, 
uh, and how. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty late, uh, late minute slideshow, so it's <laughs> not <laughs> all in proper order. This is a, this is a cover by Albert Watson. This is a really big, uh, big photographer in the States as well. Um, oh, and, and actually, this is a weird thing. This is like uh, coincidence stuff happens. This this cover we printed. This cover maybe you remember. There was this 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 big gorilla who escaped the zoo in Rotterdam this mm -hmm. one day and that was on the same day that this cover hit the street <laughs> so this cover sold like crazy <laughs> but, but probably to people who have nothing to, nothing with photography <laughs> they just like the cover so much because of this escape gorilla and it's all over here so it's pretty coincidental Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you something more about those points uh, after the first set, the next set of points. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this was something else. Um, this is shot by Kein van Noordwijk, a, a, a Dutch photographer, and um, he actually, the, the model signed the model release, so he could do with the photos in an artistic way what he might do, but she never thought of the fact that it could appear on a cover of a magazine. <laughs> so we, really, we just, as we always do, we ask for permission from the photographer, and it's the photographer's uh, responsibility <coughs> to make sure that everything is in order with, with the model, which was. So we print the magazine, we put it in stores, and not too long after we get a phone call from her agent that she's not too happy about showing her. Well, actually, this is again a new, a new one. I think for the American version, we did a, a, a bean <laughs> <laughs> Um But she wasn't too happy about it that we could pull all magazines yeah. out of the market. So we're like, no. And <laughs> 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 no, I mean, everything was okay. You signed the model release for him, so uh, it's a problem. So it was a bit pissed, but then yeah. But it's, stuff happens, you know, you have to deal, you don't, there's a lot of stuff you don't, you don't anticipate on, and which does happen afterwards, you never think of it. It's a photo by Erwin Olaf. Um, yeah, I, I already told you a little bit about our inspiration, why we started the magazine, because um, um, well, we saw the need of people looking for inspiration on an accessible level. Um, and we also saw that, that high-end photography remained in the museum, more or less. It's, it's completely different nowadays, because there's so many blogs talking about art and photography and, and visual culture and design. But back in, back in the days, it wasn't really like that. Of course, there were some blogs and stuff, but not like big time as it is. So we, want, we were print, we wanted to do this with print. And Kate Moss. Yeah. yeah, this went to the porn section in the States as well. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, well, wow, this do not do what they thought differently. <laughs> and the funny thing is, this, this picture is by Robbie Bao. He, at the time, he was like a 17 year old kid. And um, yeah, this, this photo is by this photo is by Peter Hugo, which is a really big, famous South African photographer. So actually, that's also something we don't really care who makes what, as long as we like it and we think it's really good and there's potential in the photographer. Yeah. So it can happen that there's a big difference in the type of photographer featured on the on the photo uh, on the cover with his our photo. Yes, I just wanted that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Cool. All issues are themed, by the way. So this, this is the rock and roll issue. This is the this is the Russia issue. This is low, but they're all themed. We go from that and search for photography. This is the uh, India issue. The street issue, <laughs> and Jamal Shabazz, maybe you know it, like books from time before crack and that cool stuff. Uh, this is the vernacular issue. 
Um, yeah, it do that. if you if you walk into like say Ateneum or, or, or like a pretty big bookstore that doesn't only sell big titles but also has, has eye for mm. do-it-yourself uh, uh, magazines, then you see like uh, maybe in Ateneum you see maybe over a hundred independent photographers, uh, independent magazines nowadays, which is very cool because it's, it's wide volume and some other interested in the art of making magazines and it's it's becoming like a real big niche which is interesting but in 2005 there wasn't something like that i think we were like one out of ten magazines not to name that was self-published so we did not have any competitors in that way the only competitors we had were like other photography magazines but they mostly were from abroad or on a different level um, now you have hundreds of indie magazines and um, well, it's, it's a different ball game, which is really interesting because it keeps you sharp. Uh, there's a lot of crossovers between design and photography and, uh, well... Yeah, this was really cool. This has been published widely. We were the first one to feature the photo. And after that, it got published a lot. Which you look at that. Uh, Yeah. We went bigger, we went uh, thicker, we went more high quality, uh, the prices go up, five euros isn't the same anymore, so we need to raise the price as well. Um, New Mexico is... Uh, <laughs> Stories this year. Yeah. 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 That's what we like to. Oh yeah, this is our choice. <laughs> because we always because we go with themes, we get so many submissions. We we cannot always publish everything because it doesn't fit the current theme or the upcoming themes. So there's always this 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 bit of really good stuff that's just laying around and we don't know what to do with it. And. So every now and then we make a magazine which is called what we like, what we like issue, and then we can probably start stuff up in those, uh, <coughs> those things. Yeah, content is king, is key. <coughs> photography always comes first. Um, we used to be we used to be pretty designy on stuff, uh, especially in the introductions, but we realized that um, it's only a diversion. Uh, of the photography, it doesn't. It has nothing to do with what we'd like to say. We like to speak uh, about images, to show images, to show photography, and inspire people, and not inspire people on the design level. There's loads of other volumes and platforms for that. So it's actually it looks really easy because you don't do design, but leaving out a lot of stuff is not always very easy. So the photos make up for the design. So the way how you our designers. Um, where they put photos on the page, how they put photos on the page, where they decide to put text is also a way of design, but it's a very minimal way of designing. But it's a way that we really like and our readers really appreciate. Yeah, this is a cover we did with Layer. I don't know if you know Layer, they've, they've got this virtual reality, is it virtual reality? Mm -hmm. Augmented reality, yeah. This app on your phone and you, or, or your tablet and you go over this and the cover and it recognizes the cover and it plays a movie or a, an animation or whatever. So um, I don't, I can't, well, I, I can't share it. <laughs> it's a bit weird. But uh, it's an LA issue and it pops up all the icon iconic stuff from LA studios and it comes out of her head and earrings and mouth and it's really cool. You should buy this issue. <laughs> <laughs> well actually so we don't do cover text. That's something we decided in a long a long time ago. We're a small magazine and we can print whatever cover text we like, but we thought Again, we're about photography. We just want to make the impact with a photo and just um, slap our, put our logo on it. And that's it. This is what we do. This is what we show great photography. And we hope people see that. And um, 
it's sometimes a pain in the ass because we're small, we're in the bookshelf, in the, on the bookshelves with the big magazines, like 99% of the magazines are like big. And then we are, we are there. So sometimes it's good because if they put you in a good spot, they put you in front, all the way in front. But if they're not like that, you're always like stuck behind some other magazine. So that's a bit difficult. Uh, yeah, we, we also, um, we don't offer participating photographers a fee because we cannot afford that. They will start doing that, we cannot exist any longer. Of course, we do pay the people who make the magazines, so the writers, editors, the designers, etc. But we um, um, tend to offer the photographers a wide podium, with uh, all the figures you just saw, the print edition, uh, the print run, and uh, the social media we have, the website. Um, most of the photo like it used to be like difficult, uh, more difficult, but nowadays it's pretty easy. They know us, they know what we do, but we need to offer quality. So we have high quality paper, we have a, a high quality printing process with a very good printer, um, and we do lithography. And lithography is something you might not know, but this is an old technique that actually looks at all photos, all series of photos specifically, and adjusts the photos to the um, way of printing and the way uh, the kind of paper that's being used and try to opt optimize the photography uh, in within this process so it becomes a really good on paper um, the thing is we never hear anything about it because when something's good you don't hear too much and you only hear stuff when it's not that good so this is really important to us and this is what the why the magazine is also here around because the, the, the magazine itself is a premium. We publish online daily new content, we publish on social media daily new content, daily new series, daily new interviews, daily new f uh, book reviews, everything, columns. But the, 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 uh, the printed issue is key um, and it needs to be high quality and premium product. For it to exist, otherwise, if it's not going to be a stay premium product, then people will not subscribe or buy it, and you just find everything online. And that's really important to us because that's I mean, we are about print. And this is the Brazil issue. Um, we did four covers on this, so this, 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 all those four covers are Brazil issue. Um, yeah, the 2005 do yourself distribution I explained. Um, nowadays we have three major international distributors, one in England, one in Germany, and one here in the Benelux. And they do the 30 plus countries for us uh, on a quarterly basis. Um, global subscription service, of course. <coughs> Uh, this is the redesign we did, uh, I think, two years ago. This was an issue we made in collaboration with the Action Museum. They opened a new uh, room, uh, featured a, uh, an extensive photography exhibition for the first three months, I guess. Um, so we have even been more minimal, only the logo and the issue number on the cover. Yeah, this is funny too. We really like the photo to. Uh, to be undercover, but um, the moustache was actually leaning on the on the logo. If, we, uh, if it wasn't uh, normal, <laughs> so we're like thinking, how long that just be blew it up? It was too big, and it huh. narrowed it down. It was too small, so it's like, well, let's flip it. Uh -huh. And then we were like, nah, photographers never got that. Like, uh -huh. It's like, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> she did it. And then actually, we were in Paris uh, last year, and where this where this issue was, and then this guy came up, and he's like. I was like, what? Uh, I was like, can you turn around? He <laughs> yeah. was the guy from the cover. Very yeah. really funny. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have any marketing back then, now we do part of our social media outlets to this. This is a really good cover. Uh, this is this this color is just slightly off. Just it should be like no, gray tone. It's 
Lieber. Lieber. Oh, that's our website. Uh, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> you can check us out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I do like you to know that um, in the Netherlands it's pretty privileged to be interested in photography. There's a lot going on. If the unseen font version, I already know, as the phone photography museum, there's Heisner Seye, uh, Phone does make a magazine, we make a magazine. Um, besides that, there is in Rotterdam the uh, Photo Museum in Den Haag as well. And they're all really high quality. Stuff happening here in the Netherlands in photography, there's also some good courses and education, is high level stuff. It's not, I mean, maybe in the States, a couple, a couple of things. but. Um, comparing it to the rest of the world, there's good stuff happening here. So do open your eyes if you're into photography. Go visit exhibitions. It's good stuff. It's, it's worth it. Um, I think that's it for me. Good night.